It seems like everywhere you turn today, people are talking about value. You need to give more value. You can't just be a feature and benefits person, or you can't just go out and pitch. I presume that we all have an understanding that value is in the eyes of the beholder right now, but assessing value isn't as easy as it seems. And my guest today is going to talk about that. He's going to highlight why we can't just tell our sales rep to go and quote unquote, create value. I mean, think about it. Today's buyers are coming to the table more prepared than ever before. They've done the research. They're like more than halfway through the sales process already in some instances. How do you go about helping that individual to recognize your expertise and that you are the one that can solve their problem? Listen to this episode and learn how you go about assessing value. This episode is brought to you in part by MailTag.io. It's a Chrome browser extension that notifies you when someone opens your email or clicks on a link. Go ahead and check out a 14-day trial with MailTag. Simply go to MailTag.io. This episode is also brought to you in part by TSC Certified Sales Training Program, a course designed to help sellers elevate their sales game, find more ideal customers, build stronger value, and close more deals. To check out our upcoming semester or to go ahead and take a free trial, go to the salesevangelist.com slash free course. Again, the salesevangelist.com slash free course. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly. The Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we have a phenomenal guest. His name is Mr. Ken Rutsky. Now, Ken is a renowned specialist in achieving and growing market leadership. He also comes with years of experience advising B2B companies. And during our conversation today, he highlights and points out why just going out and assessing value is not as easy as it seems and how we could go about fixing that problem. Check out his story. Welcome to the show, Ken. Hey, how are you there, Donald? You know, I can't complain. Another beautiful day here in in South Florida and paradise, man. But how about you? How's life going for you today? Life is great. We've had uh, some freak rainstorms, thunderstorms here in California yesterday, which is very strange for us in Northern California. I kind of felt like I was in South Florida. (laughs) I know. (laughs) <laughs> what part of California exactly? I'm in the Silicon Valley near Stanford University in a town called Menlo Park. Ah, gosh, I mean, that's beautiful. But yeah, it's definitely unusual for you to get a lot of thunderstorms. Well, it's a good thing, though. Keep it now so California doesn't have any more droughts, at least. There you the go. Summer. Perfect. Perfect. We'll send some more your way. <laughs> well, Ken, before we get started on the fun stuff today, because we're going to talk about why assessing value is not as easy and simple as most companies think it is. But before we dive into that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and what you do? Yeah, that's great. So I'm a business marketing consultant and go to market and uh, really specialize in helping companies tell their story in a way that uh, connects it to the customer and isn't all about them, but is really about the journey they can take their customer on. And I think, you know, when we think about value, it's all connected into the stories we tell. And I've been doing this for a couple decades. And you know, it's a lot of fun. I started my career in engineering with IBM and moved into marketing with Intel and some other large companies, Netscape at the beginning of the internet. Yeah. And for the last decade, I've been out on my own uh, helping companies position and, and market their products for success. Awesome, man. Well, this is why I feel that you're going to bring some tremendous value to the table today and help us with this thought. But let's define value in the first place. How would you define it? That's a super question because I spent a lot of time explaining to my clients, both sales and marketing professionals, you know, what is value and value really is in the eye of the buyer. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we're trying to sell something, essentially what we're doing is we're making a trade of the two things they value the most in order of least to more, which is money, which everybody values. But really what buyers usually value even more is their time and their ability to spend time understanding, evaluating, and implementing a solution or a product. Yeah. So when we're asking for those two rare commodities from our buyer, 
we have to deliver something that that is equal to or great, hopefully much greater than that in value. And so, you know, my simple definition of value is what do the customer open his wallet and pay for? Mm. I love the definition that you share that value is an eye of the beholder, which it definitely is. And it's just true. In the case of sales reps who are listening and they're getting all pumped, excited to listen to this now, why, what's the problem when it comes to, because it will back up. Some sales reps are saying, yeah, I do create value all the time. I know that I'm creating value, but we know that maybe that's not always the case. They may think they're doing it, but it's probably not right. How do you go about helping a sales rep understand what's wrong when, I guess, what is wrong when sales reps are trying to create value these days? Because you said it's not as easy as we think. Yeah. Well, I think the first thing is I wrote a blog a long time ago and it's still one of my favorite blog titles ever. It's why we overvalue value. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, as we're you know focusing this entire conversation on value, I'm going to tell you one of the biggest mistakes we make is we overvalue our own perception of our own value, right? And so, yeah, I like to say I've got four kids, Donald, and if we ended up on an airplane next to each other and I pulled out my iPhone and I uh, started showing you pictures of my kids, you know, by the third one, you've seen enough, right? And I think what uh, we tend to do is people are really pumped and excited about our goods and services. We want to show the thousand pictures of it to our clients. We overvalue kind of what they're going to see in it. And what we really need to do is, is, you know, it's, it's cliche, but we really need to be related to the customer in the customer's shoes, not in ours. And, and I think there's you know, a few other things too that have changed. Information's become so commoditized, right? And it, you know, when I grew up in the world of enterprise sales, you know, I was trained in classic IBM selling, right? Which was all need, feature, advantage, reaction. But even more so, it's like, I'm not going to tell you anything about what I do until I understand exactly how I can articulate how I can help you. And so, you know, I was literally trained if the, you walk into the beginning of a sales call, and, you know, the, if the customer says, tell me about your product, you say, you know, that's great, Donald. I'd love to do that. But first, let me ask you a few questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that really doesn't fly anymore because they don't need to know about your product anymore. So they're just going to your website or your competitor's website, even worse. And they're finding everything they ever wanted to know about product. So, you know, we've got to get out of our thousand pictures of our product and into a different context. And so... Yeah, I think there's really, in my book, Launching to Leading, I do talk about, you know, how I think uh, salespeople should succeed today. And I, you know, the first thing they need to do is you need to create that shared context with the customer. And that's really the customer's context, not yours. What do you mean by that, that shared context exactly? Yeah, so I need to show up as a salesperson. And, you know, I think I can talk to this with a little bit of authority because I'm selling every day in my business, right? So. I, you know, I not only a marketing consultant, but I I'm, I'm do sales every day. And I think as a, and I used, as I said, sell for IBM. You have to show up and you have to start the conversation about your customer's world. And you have to come in educated and with a point of view or what I call a viewpoint around how you're, you can transform your customer's world. And so, you know, Forrester, the, the market research folks and analysts, they did some research on I think about seven or eight years ago, and they asked business to business buyers, what do you want from your sales rep? Mm. And oddly enough, or maybe not so oddly after what I've said, product knowledge was, well, where do you think product knowledge was? In the t- within the, I'll tell you, it was in the top 10. But what number do you think product knowledge was? Six, number six. You're close. I think it was either seven or eight. So we'll give you a pretty good guess there. <laughs> number eight. <laughs> close enough for government work, as they say. Uh, <laughs> So uh, number one was they understand my business, meaning the buyer's business, right? And and I don't think any sales rep finds that too surprising. Number two is what I think was the big surprise, which is they teach me something I don't know. So I think you have to come in first and establish that you're in the context of your customer's world. You're not coming in in the context of I'm here to sell something to you. You're coming in to have a conversation about their business you understand their business, and you create that context, and then you quickly transition into teaching them something. Challenger sale, right? They call that commercial insight. Bring some commercial insight with you. And I think teaching something is critical to establishing you know, your value as a salesperson. Because if I'm not learning something from you, why don't I just go to your website? 
Yeah. It's like, if, I mean, I can do some of this work by myself then, if that's the case. You know what I mean? In fact, that's what customers do, right? They're about 60% of the way through their purchasing, according to research from the folks who wrote Challenge, right? Is that they, they're about 60% through their buying before they even want to talk to a salesperson. Now, there's a whole set of challenges that creates for marketing people. But I think also for salespeople, they need to realize that, you know, in some cases, that customer knows as much about your product as you do. And so, you know, if you're going to create value, you better get into their world and then teach them something about, you know, the transformative value of your product or about what other people in the industry are doing that they don't have visibility to or about one of the trends that's coming up in the market that's going to impact them in a way they don't expect it to. So I've got to find that teaching opportunity. Hey, we're going to take a quick break, but when we get back, Ken is going to pick up where we left off and continue to share with you how and why it's so critical that you understand how to assess value and recognize that it's not as easy as we make it to be. You're listening to the Sales Evangelist Podcast, and I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. You meet this amazing prospect on LinkedIn. They're the right size firm, the right income, the right number of employees. They're right within your Goldilocks zone. They have a problem and you can solve that problem with your software. You schedule an initial appointment. You send out an email to them and to a couple of their team members. You also send out some information about your firm, but you don't know if they're opening your emails or not. You don't know if they're clicking through and going to the web pages that you recommended. It's a Chrome browser extension that allows you to get notification when someone opens your email or clicks on a link. The coolest part is that you can schedule your emails for later. Mailtag.io has a free 14-day trial, so you don't have to take my word for it. You can go and test it out. And when you do fall in love with it, go ahead and use promo code Donald at checkout and get half off your subscription for life. Shh, don't go telling nobody about that now. Half off your subscription for life just because you're listening to the TSE podcast. To find out more information, again, go to mailtag.io. But let's continue the story. The prospect then goes ahead and clicks on all of your links. They go back to your website. They're doing their initial research. They want to schedule the next meeting. You go through the process. You create a demonstration. I mean, an amazing demonstration. You gave it everything you had, your emotion, your heart, your feelings. You gave epic value. But still yet, when it's all said and done, they said, Ah, thank you so much, Donald. Unfortunately, we are going with another vendor. We appreciate all that you did. Thank you. Devastated. I know that feeling. I've been there. You've been there. And it's horrible. But we can fix that. We fix that by helping you with TSC Certified Sales Training Program. We would love for you to check out our upcoming semester to learn how we can help you not only find the right customers, not only say the right things and help your clients get all the way to the demonstration, but actually what you should be doing to help them convert to come towards your product or your service. To find out more information, go to thesalesevangelist.com slash C-S-T. Again, thesalesevangelist.com slash C for certified, S for sales, T for training. We have a new semester coming up in April and I would love to have you join us. Let's help you to close more deals. Hey, welcome back. As we dive into the second half, Ken is going to pick up and continue to share with you ideas that you could take and implement to help you identify and assess value just a little bit better. Okay, a lot better. How do you go about educating sales reps on doing this? Because some sales rep might say this is marketing's job, clearly, to go out and do that stuff. Is that the seller's responsibility to get that knowledge? Yeah, I think it is marketing's job to uh, create the stories, but it, you know, sales has to be the one to deliver them and put the context around them in the in the selling process, right? So, you know, marketing as much as marketers love to talk to, about one to one marketing, it's still a one to many art, and in many ways, is you know, I create the story, but the great sales reps show up and contextualize that to the customer they're talking to. So understanding the story and the value 
is the first thing I think sales reps need to do is what is the story of my product? How does my product transform the results of my customer or part of their business? And how am I going to tell that story? And then you know, take that and use it. But you have to put a little bit of work in to learn it. Marketing can create it, but sales has to learn it and then make it theirs. Yeah. Now, I think that's one of those things that makes it so... <laughs> Like you said, it's so challenging now more than ever. You can't, you really can't just go into the scenario and just say, you know, I'm going, I'm delivering value on what my company think is value. It really comes down to what they need and what the challenge that they have is at hand. But if you can't, if you don't know that stuff, if you're not doing any of this homework, then, you know, by all means, you're not going to be successful. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I think uh, having been a sales person myself, I know how hard it is, right? I know what it's like to be on quota to feel that pressure and, and also to, you know, the thrill of delivery, right? But, you know, you have to do the hard work. I wish I had the magic shortcut for people, but, you know, I think the shortcut is don't take the shortcut. Yeah, no way. <laughs> we, the shortcut always leads to, to some kind of problem. <laughs> yeah, what's the saying? Shortcuts make long delays, right? That's <laughs> what sales cycles do, I guess. Yeah, so true on that. Well, here's one, another thought that I want to get at. What can the leaders do when it comes towards helping to create value? Because I feel like this is something a sales rep can't do on their own. This it has to be an organizational transformation. Like you said, marketing needs to be involved. The sales leaders, what's their role in all of this? You know, it's interesting that you asked that. It, we did a panel at, at my go-to-market dojo where we had a bunch of sales and marketing leaders. And we were talking about sales and marketing alignment. And we went through a lot of, you know, talk about technology and talk about process and talk about, you know, this and that. And then at the end of the 45 minute discussion, I asked each of the leaders, you know, what's the number one thing that can improve sales and marketing alignment? And <laughs> all four of them said, without a doubt, empathy, empathy for each other, empathy for the role, teamwork, but first and foremost, empathy, which I thought was really, really startling right here. You know, it all really does come down to people. Understanding, you know, for sales leaders, that means understanding that marketing is working hard to, you know, provide the stories and the materials. And that, you know, if they feel like they're not getting the things they need for marketing, it's a shared responsibility to make that connection work. And for, you know, marketers, I think empathy towards, you know, the, the pressure and the difficulty of selling, it's a hard, job. And, you know, I think a lot of times marketing people feel like, you know, all that the salesperson needs to do is show up and repeat. Yes. And, um, you and I know that's the furthest from the truth. But great marketers have great empathy and they understand. They understand what sales, what it is to be in sales. They're out at the customer with sales hand in hand and they're, you know, working as a team. So I think first and foremost, leaders need to create that environment of empathy across the organization. Yeah. And I feel that the whole idea of the empathy, that's one of the first times I've heard it. people emphasize it on the internal, you know, the team. But most times it's like, you know, you need to have empathy for the buyer, but not necessarily empathy for others within the organization as well. And understanding marketing, understanding where sales coming from, sales understanding where marketing coming from. Yeah. And the great, I mean, I spend most of my time with marketers now and sales leaders, but primarily marketers and the great marketers, you know, they are you always know who the best marketers in the organization are because they're the ones the sales reps call in, right? Or call or, or, you know, pick up the phone and talk to, right? And regardless of their title or their position, you know, they're the ones. I can think of one client of mine who's got a very, a fairly new marketer who's point on competitive uh, marketing. And the phone is just ringing off the hook for that person because every time sales calls, she's adding value and creating better context for them. And I think one of the reasons is, is she's out of the market and uh, engaging in the marketplace. Yeah. And I think that's one of the key parts there is engaging. You bring up something that just like helped to recognize like how going back to again, having empathy towards the whole team. When you're out in the marketplace, you're out there as a sales rep, you can get great information, but you can't, that information is not going to do anything unless you bring it back to the nest, to the team, so the family can be able to help decipher and to create content or, you know, create a battle plan, so to speak, based on what yeah. we're learning. And, you know, the organization has to make that really simple for the sales reps, right? Yep. Because the sales reps have many other things that are, you know, personally important to them, right? I'm optimizing on my quota attainment, 
as I should be, because that's what the organization pays me to do, first mm-hmm. and foremost, right? But you're right, to scale, you need that information coming back. But if it's not easy for me to do, I'm never going to do it, right? <laughs> uh, you know, that, again, that's where empathy comes in, because it's sales operations, making it really simple as marketing operations and competitive marketing, you know, creating value in a two-way, you know, back to value, right? I mean, we've drifted a little away from customer value, which yeah, I'd love to get back to in the last few minutes here. But you know, value is is the thing that has to be exchanged for time all the time, and so we need to make that really, really easy for sales to get that information back to the organization. Are there anything else that we need to be aware of when it comes towards creating value, or any of the challenges that we have overlooked when it comes to creating value? Yeah, I think in the sales scenario, you know, at the coal face, as they would say in the UK, right. Uh, you know, one of the other things I was trained to do at, at IBM is if someone said, can I see your product? You'd say, yeah, of course. But you know, that's really something I can do after I can customize the demo and really understand exactly what you need and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, with the internet and today's ability uh, for people to put up videos and try and buy versions of products and examples, you know, it really is becoming more of a show me. You know, we all got to move to Missouri, as I say, uh, and become mm-hmm. show me marketers, right? It's the show me age and, and salespeople. And I think sales reps have to be confident and courageous enough to show the product very early and often in the sales cycle. Whatever show the product means, you know, whether that's a real demonstration or a case study or an example in products that, you know, maybe are tangible products that can't be like just demonstrated on a computer. But I have to demonstrate my value if I want my customer to believe it. And I can't wait, you know, six weeks into a sales cycle or two thirds of the way into a sales cycle before I'm willing to, you know, so called open the kimono. I have to demonstrate early and often. And that's, again, one of the things that sales needs to, you know, make sure they get from the factory, so to speak, right? The field needs the ability to demonstrate and create their own context for that demonstration. So, you know, when I think of the sales rep and I think, see the best sales reps out there today, you know, it goes in that order. It's like create that shared context. I teach my customer something and then I show them how the product can enable that thing I taught them. And, you know, that can all happen in the first call. It happened over six weeks. And then, by the way, it should happen again and again and again and again. And as I get later and later in the selling cycle, I'm doing less of the context because we're already in it. I'm doing less of the teaching because they already know, and I'm doing more of the showing and proving. Mm. So if I understand you correctly, going back to this, we need to show sooner and more often in our sales cycle. And oftentimes the buyer, because the buyer wants to get information, they're asking way sooner than before to see more and to get more information. Again, traditionally, we're told, we tell them, hold off. I can't give you that yet. Yeah. I actually don't think they're asking any sooner. I just Mm. think they're they don't have the patience they used to have, right? Because they just go to the internet. And if you're not doing it, your competitor probably is. So, you know, that's how we lose the sales. We don't even know why, because, you know, we just were almost shy, right? And when you're shy about your value, I think it comes across not as, you know, this person trying to control the sales cycle, but maybe he or she's hiding something. Boom. I was they waiting don't for you to say have it. what I need, right? I was waiting for you to say that because that's the, that's the feeling that I get sometimes. And you know, coming from the sales rep side though, you know, I'm always like, I know what you're doing, but also it's a simple fact. Like if you can't answer the question for me, bro, like something is wrong. You really can't tell me. You've worked with so many clients and you can't tell me what ballpark this price is in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like, price is another thing. You know, I think <laughs> we've, got it, we've got so much more price transparency in the world today. Yeah, uh, so much easier to even in industries where pricing is you know pretty closely held, which is you know in my opinion too many now. Yeah, you know even in those industries, there's so much uh, third party data made available now that you know buyers kind of know and they just want to make sure they get the straight answer from you. Love it, man. Love it. Now, if there is one major piece of advice that you want folks who are listening to this who are having a tough time building value based on what we discussed today, what's that one major piece of advice you want to leave with? I say do the homework and understand your customer and then everything follows from there. Love it, man. Well, if individuals are listening to this, they're getting, you know, excited. They they heard about some of the great things you talked about today and they want to learn more from you and connect with you. What's the best way for them to go about to connect with you? 
That's pretty easy. It's just Ken Rutsky, K-E-N-R-U-T-S-K-Y.com. And you can find information about me, some of my clients, information about launching to leading and links to buy the book and all that other fun stuff. So we can find all the good stuff. We don't have to call and get any tricks, right? You're going to give it to us straight, the website. Yeah, it's pretty much all there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Ken, man. Thank you so much for your willingness to come on a show, for just being so generous with your time and for the information that you shared with us. I feel that it's, it helped to put us in the right mind and helping us on the right path. So thank you again. Awesome. Have a great day. Boom! I'm telling you, man, Ken knows what he's talking about. This concept is very important. And I think it's not only important that you understand it, but everyone on your team, because recognize that sales, even though there's a lot of individual aspect of selling, it's kind of like a track meet in some ways where you might run your individual race, but collectively as a team, everybody wants your team to do well. Everybody wants to be the best track team in the state. And in that scenario, I want you guys to be the best team in your area, in your region. So I want you to share this idea with your team members. Some of them didn't listen to the episode today. Your boss probably is not a podcast person. Teach them, show them how they can listen to it because the concept here that Ken shared, I feel can benefit all of us no matter what industry we're in. I want you to go back and listen to it again and I want you to share it. A matter of fact, if you want to go to the show notes, you can share that directly with your friends, with your supervisor, with your team, with your boss. It's the salesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 1106. So the salesevangelist dot com slash the word episode, then the number 1106. You'll also find links back to our sponsors, and we're grateful for them, specifically MailTag.io, as well as TSC Certified Sales Training Program. Find all the links in the show notes. Again, the salesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 1106. I share this with you because I want to help. I want you to find more ideal customers. I want you to have more meaningful conversations and then gradually and naturally, it's going to lead to you closing more deals. But most importantly, I want you to challenge yourself to go out each and every single day and do big things. Hey, thank you so much for listening today. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit subscribe. Show your friends, your colleagues how they can subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen to find podcasts. It would be extremely appreciated. Thank you so much. It goes a long way. Our show today was produced by myself and the Sales Podcast Network. It was edited and mixed together by the one and only Mr. George Bale. Our content writer and show note creator is Mrs. Shannon Rasmussen. You can find audio credits to this and all of our episodes in the show notes. And as always, I am your host, your coach, your mentor, your guide down the sales journey, Mr. Donald C. Kelly, the sales evangelist. Sales Podcast Network.